Welcome! Today we will look at some teaching techniques that can be used to teach civics and government standards focusing on the different types of economic systems. Standards Social Studies Grade 7, Civics and Governments 1, 3, and 4 all focus on the citizen participation in autocratic and democratic governments. There is also a focus on the two types of democracy, parliamentary and presidential. Some lesson ideas for teaching these standards include vocabulary games, creating con crazy country examples, a novel study, a debate, and we will also look at a useful resource, the CIA's World Factbook. Like most units, direct vocabulary instruction will need to play a role. However, we should always look for ways to make this instruction more than just copying vocabulary words. Here we will look at some ideas to work with the vocabulary words in a way to make them more meaningful to students. Gameplay. One game that can be used to practice and explore vocabulary is charades. Give a student one of the words from the list and have them act out the word without speaking or making sounds. Or you could have students complete a Pictionary style game where they have to draw an illustration of the vocabulary word without including words or speaking while drawing. Not only will these force the student acting and drawing to come up with a creative way to demonstrate the word, but it will also give the other students a mental image to attach to the word. Another unique way to practice identifying government systems is to create crazy country examples. Identifying real places is important, however, you can tell if the students understand the concept if they can apply it to different situations. First, you can create some examples, like the ones that I will show you, and then you can have students create their own. Here is an example of a crazy country example. He did it has a population of 5 million. The country has a prime minister elected by their parliament every five years. The citizens enjoy decisions made. The citizens enjoy seeing decisions made by who they vote for. This would be an example of a parliamentary democracy. Another example is Herbert Seesawville. He is the leader of Seesawville. He has a small alliance of leaders that help him make decisions and carry out laws. The citizens of Seesawville are allowed to vote on issues, but are greatly influenced in how to vote by Seesaw and his regime. Based on the clues in this example, one is led to believe that the government is autocratic. This is a good time to talk about the fact that voting does not equal democracy. Lots of countries vote, but their elections are either not free or their leadership controls what can be voted on. A third crazy country example is, the dictator of all Meville has been in control since 1925. Citizens in all Meville have no rights to vote and many times have tried to overthrow the dictator. However, each time they have failed. This is obviously an autocratic government. Another example, the leader of Pantherland is elected every seven years. This year, there are three candidates. The citizens of Pantherland can't wait to go to the polls and vote for who they want to become their leader. This is a presidential democracy. If you choose to use this example, I would encourage you to change Pantherland to match your school mascot. Maybe yours would be Lion Land or Eagle Land. A final example for today. The monarch of Toyland consists of a king and his queen. The king is in charge of making all the government decisions in the country. The poor citizens have little to look forward to when it comes to progress in the country. They get no say so at all in what happens to their land or livelihood. This is another example of autocracy. With this example, you can extend your discussion to the term monarchy. A novel study is another way to discuss government systems in your classroom. There are many novels that you could choose, but one book that I would recommend 
is Among the Hidden by Margaret Peterson Haddix. This is the first in a series called the Shadow Children series. The basic premise of the book is that there is a country where it is illegal for families to have third children. The story follows a third child who is in hiding in his parents' attic in their farmhouse. When some new houses are built near them, he thinks that he has discovered another third child. Throughout the story, the family often talks about the role of the government, the role that the government plays in their lives, including laws that make pets and junk food illegal. This novel is a work of fiction, but provides an oppor opportunity for students to apply their knowledge of both government and economic terms. This novel is a work of fiction, but provides an opportunity for students to apply their knowledge of both government and economic terms. At a Lexile level of 800, this novel should be accessible to most students as an individual read. However, it is also short enough to complete as a read aloud using about 10 minutes a day for a couple of weeks. When finished reading, this is a great place to work on the writing literacy standards. Here is an example of a writing prompt that students can complete. Students are asked to determine the government and economic system found in the book. For each, they should provide evidence from the novel and then present all of this in a developed paragraph. Students could also be asked to predict what will happen in the next novel in the series. In fact, some students may choose to continue reading the entire series. Another class activity that can be completed as part of a government study is debate. Students should decide which is better, a presidential democracy or a parliamentary democracy. Students will need to be able to provide reasons for their decision. This is a good time to have students research with a purpose. This is another opportunity for students to work on their writing skills. Students can explain their position and their reasoning in a blog type post. Debate.org has a similar debate posted, however, please be warned that some posts are not appropriate. The class can also use this topic to have a formal debate. If you have an advanced content class, then this may be an opportunity to teach debate rules and procedures. In planning a government unit, one resource that may be very helpful is the CIA's World Factbook. This is a trustworthy site where you can get accurate and up-to-date information about the countries around the world. This website is from the CIA and has many resources that can be used throughout the school year. Here there are up-to-date political and physical maps. This is a useful resource when many of the print resources in schools are out of date. Let's go back. On this home page, you can also find the Guide to Country Comparisons. Under each one of these categories, you can find the countries of the world ranked from highest to lowest. For instance, under People and Society, you can find the population. This is going to show you that China has the largest population and India is second. Also under people and society, we can find education expenditures. You can see what countries spend the most or the highest percentage of their GDP on education. These rankings could be used for a variety of purposes throughout the year. This website is also helpful in finding detailed information about a specific country. For instance, China is one of the countries that will need to examine the government system. So we will pick China. If we use this page, we can find an enormous amount of information about China. <clears throat> At the top, you can find an image of the flag. 
Each country also has a bank of pictures that can be useful in teaching. For instance, here is a picture of Tiananmen Square. You could use this picture when teaching the history standards of Asia. Under each category, there is a lot of information about China. Since we are focusing on government today, let's look at what we can find about China's government. First, we see the name of the country, followed by the government type and capital. If we continue to scroll down, we can see the voting age and specific information about branches of government. Under executive branch, you can see that the president and vice president are indirectly elected by the National People's Congress. This can be used to show that the country is not a democracy, which may be hard for some students after seeing that there is a voting age. Another piece of evidence is under the legislative branch, where you can see that only members of the CCP are elected. Once again, not a free election. Overall, this website can be used as a resource for the teacher to have a better understanding of a country, or as a resource for the students to research and study. As we conclude, remember to include a variety of activities in your unit to meet different learning styles and needs. Feel free to use or modify these activities to meet your teaching style and your students. Good luck to you as you plan your upcoming government unit.